praise the Lord Jesus. Gay is not sin, and Jesus is not asking the gay person to change and be straight. Kind of exciting times we're living in. Every day you can hear more and more about how last day's events are seeming to appear on a daily basis now. And if you look at the internet and search out what the prophecies and predictions are trying to say these days, it, uh, it's really getting bad. We, today is just the day after the September 23rd, and September 23rd was about as worse as anybody could hear if they were looking online for something to happen that would indicate the last days. And of course, uh, today's here, so those prophecies or predictions about yesterday has come and gone, and we're all still here. Uh, though much of what they talk about is going on in the world, there is uh, worse and worse events that are beginning to happen. And so we need to uh, be aware of this and keep persevering, persevering to the end. And uh, because Jesus is going to return, uh, Jesus is real. A lot of people still these days now are thinking that he's not and going about life as though uh, we make our own destiny, as it were. And But Jesus is real. God did send Jesus to earth to become a man, from God to become a man and die for the world's sin. He was able to die because he was pure and without sin. And he climbed up on that cross and shed his blood for you and all the sins of the world, past, present, and future. And all you have to do is believe in him. It's simple. It's called by faith that you are saved. God first loved you while you're yet a sinner. And so he paid the price. You should have paid the price for your sin, but he paid it in your stead so that you could live with him forever because he loves you so much. And he told us that before he returns, certain events are going to begin to happen. The nation of Israel will become a nation again after 2,000 years of not being a nation. And he predicted the many end-time events that, that are, some of them haven't happened yet, a lot of them have happened. Uh, a lot of preachers and pastors, if you go into church, will teach you that at any given moment, the rapture will take place. <clears throat> and then so we'll miss everything that the book of Revelation talks about. However, the book of Revelation doesn't say that Christians will miss the tribulation. They'll miss the last half of the tribulation, which is called the wrath of God, three and a half years. But they will go through the first part of the tribulation. And before you can even get to the tribulation... There's some events that hasn't taken place that does take a segment of time. Uh, the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 39, verse 9, that Israel is going to be burning weapons for seven years and they're going to be burying dead people for seven months because there's going to be a war in the Middle East where it's called Gog and Magog, where... Basically, it's Russia uh, that's going to lead Middle East countries to invade Israel. And then suddenly, they're going to be wiped out. In Ezekiel 38 and 39, it tells you that five, six of them will be wiped out. So you got all these bodies laying all over Israel, and their weapons lay where they fall. And it says that Israel will be burning these weapons for seven years. Now, if you read Revelations, 
or hear anything about any prophecy teacher, none of them will tell you that Israel is spending time during the seven-year tribulation period burning weapons. And when you go into the thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ, it doesn't start off with, but first Israel has to burn weapons for 7,000 years. As though they're burning the weapons of Armageddon, the last war the Bible talks about. Uh, so we have to look forward to an event that in the Middle East, and we got all the ingredients of it, uh, United States is looking like it doesn't care so much and Russia is flexing its muscles and the Middle East never been happy about Israel and so as we're watching the reports on what's going on in there we ought to see a coalition of them uh, force starting to build up that could invade Israel. Then you have to look to God saying that He stops it. And if we look through the Bible, we find out that God stops things or intervenes in things by using other nations. You'll have other countries invade countries and take over. And some of those are real favorite prophecies to teach. Like they have the, the statue that has the head of gold and the chest of brass and it goes on down to uh, the feet which are mixed with iron and clay which will be broken in the last days and it represents nations and, it, and we have history that tells us that the nations has come on in and taken over other nations and so it could be very well that God would use a nation to basically kill off five, six of the invading forces that is the Gog and, Gog and Magog war. And so you have to look for, is there a country that would possibly protect Israel in all the world? Well, the Bible actually tells you that there is a nation that is referred to by wings of an eagle or as an eagle basically and that's the United States. It first started out being the wings were actually attached to a lion which represented the United Kingdom and, but the, it, the Bible tells us that those wings were plucked off so in other words somehow or another the United States broke away from England. We know that as a fact of history. So the Bible did predict that the wings will be plucked off of lion, which is well known to be England, the United Kingdom. And the United States has always been a friend of Israel and has vowed to protect Israel. And they have the power, they're the strongest nation in the world, and they could indeed kill off five-sixths of the army relatively quickly in the Middle East that come down and invade Israel. But also what's not clearly taught, but it's strange today that that people, we already know that people basically are going to love Antichrist and rise him to power, and especially the church will do this. Uh, and so we have to see a figure that looks like Antichrist. And will, would Antichrist ever protect Israel? You'd think he'd hate Israel, but he wants to be king of the world. He wants to be everybody to worship him. And, and the Bible says that Antichrist will sit in the temple and declare himself God. So that means there has to be a new temple in Israel, the third temple. And of course we got the facts that it's already ready to be built. Supplies, the training of priests, and the furniture and all that, these things are already done. And they're just waiting for approval. There's actually been laws in Israel <laughs> that would 
allow for building of the temple basically right in next to the Dome of the Rock there. They could put both the Dome of the Rock and the Temple of God side by side. Revelationists, they tell uh, John to measure the temple but don't measure the outside because it belongs to the Gentiles. And so that's a perfect description of of sharing that Temple Mount. And so these things are ready, but you also have to have an Antichrist. And people love to preach, oh, Jesus can come any minute. I mean, he might come tonight, so they love to use this as a, a threat as it was, except Jesus, are you going to go to hell or you're going to go through the tribulation period? And they describe how terrible the tribulation period is to scare you into accepting Jesus. When Jesus paid the price for your sin, you ought to be thankful. And he loved you, so you ought to fall in love with Jesus and accept Jesus because Jesus is the Son of God and loves you, creator of all things. You shouldn't be accepting Jesus to miss the calamities that are coming. He promises that you, you, can, you can miss the wrath of God, but he doesn't promise you you can miss some of the tribulation. And the church has been one of the worst sinners that you can imagine. And it's easy for us to look back in history and see how terrible the church has been, the Catholics, the Protestants, and how they demanded so much of their followers and their punishment was severe to those that didn't abide by their rules and their doctrines. And so there's got to be a time of judgment for Christians that persecute Christians. So many people have died at the hands of the church. And there's got to be justice, for God is just. And so there's got to be a period of time that the church is going to be chastised now you as a believer, when you accept Jesus, you're saved. If you keep that faith that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and He paid the price for your sins by dying on the cross and then He rose on the third day, if you keep that faith, then you will be saved. But as for the church-wide, as an organization of believers, this is, isn't something that is forgiven as it was or won't go unpunished. God has heard the prayers of the saints and today Christians are just a, as, as bad or worse than they've ever been trying to deny large groups of people from heaven and pointing fingers at people saying you're sinning and they're saying this is why calamity is coming on the United States is because the United States is is legalizing immorality in their eyes instead of studying the Bible to see if what they're saying is true or not they just say what their doctrine is is that's it and that's no, there's nothing going to change that so they want their way or there isn't a way and so Christians are as a church-wide group is sinning just as much if not more than they have been from all the past 2,000 years. So there is a time of justice and God describes this time as 1260 days where there will be a shaking of the church. And two witnesses will be coming out not only to wreak havoc on Antichrist but also the church and all manner of plagues will come out and the church will hate these two witnesses and Antichrist will say he could kill them and so they go ahead and give Antichrist the power and is this possible? Is there anybody in the world that is claiming behaviors that Antichrist is shown in the Bible to have? Well. As usual, almost every leader that ever was, people have said that person is the Antichrist. And boy, how the church believed that Obama was the Antichrist. And now we've got a new person in there. And at first the church wasn't going along too much with he's Antichrist. But slowly, 
many more Christians are thinking it's a possibility. And if you look at his behavior, he's a narcissist. He is, I will do it, I will do it, I will do it. He's the best that there ever was. He can make the deal. And he's determined to make the peace in the Middle East. And of course, if you're Christian and read the Bible, you should know that whoever makes the peace deal is Antichrist. The Bible doesn't give you any if, ands, or buts. They're pretty descriptive in Daniel, uh, the last chapter of Daniel, the last book of the last chapter of Daniel. It describes how Antichrist will make a deal. Middle East deal and there will be peace in the Middle East and a lot of this deal has already been worked out and pretty much agreed to uh, like a two state system or something there can't be a one state system Israel can't absorb the Palestine because there's too many of them and if they get the right to vote they'll vote in Sharia law and so it's just not possible that there could ever be an absorption of Islam into Israel. But the two-state system is more what the Bible talks about. They, they talk about like the land of uh, the West Bank. It's where That's where Judah was. And the Bible tells the people that are in Judah to flee for the abomination of desolation will set itself up in the temple of God and so there are a lot of Jews that live there and they will basically become citizens of the Palestinian state and so God is telling them when they see Antichrist sitting in the temple and declaring himself God they need to flee as fast as they can without picking up anything and head to the hills And so what we're looking for now is some man in the world to rise up. And the Bible tells us this man comes from the old Roman Empire. Pretty clear. And does this mean that he's going to come from Europe where the old Roman Empire was? Or the Bible is talking about descendants. The, if we look at the old Roman Empire we'll find out that the United States is generally full of all the nations of the old Roman Empire. So you could say that the United States is out of the old Roman Empire, so it's likely Antichrist could come out of the uh, old Roman Empire. And so we, we can look for Antichrist, because Antichrist needs some sort of power, because it, right now, as I see, does Europe has the power? Does Russia have the power, and Russia not out of the old Roman Empire, though. So you, so you're trying to figure out how could is does he use magical power or spiritual power of some sort, and and so nobody can fight that. Or, or if we read the Bible, the power comes from the might of nations, and when God gives nations this kind of might and power, there's a process that you can look that there's no magic involved is they just won that power they came to power the United States came to power and became as powerful as they are because of a lot of effort blessed by God no doubt that God rose the United States up to be the most powerful country in the world so the Antichrist can have this power that nobody would dare stand against. And so we're looking for a man to come to power in the United States, likely. And that is the talk of the town. And has a famous description of being a liar and having a bizarre following where nothing he can do, he can kill somebody in, on Fifth Avenue and he won't lose a vote, so he claims. And it seems like his followers follow him in such a way that it doesn't matter what he does, 
which means guaranteed him to power. Of course, we're seeing nowadays so much going on that it looks like he could be kicked out. That sometimes presidents have a way, and it always usually seems to be war, to keep their power strong or keep their base strong. But we have somebody that the world's talking about almost 24 7 and saying things that he's the best that there ever is and he can make deals like the Middle East deal. And Christians, no matter how much you want to support the current president, and he got elected with over 80% of the Christian vote, which the Bible says the Christians are going basically going to support him because he's not going to come to power without the support of, of the church. And the church did put Antichrist into power, if, or at least the President of the United States in the power, of somebody that says things that is bizarre for any kind of president we've ever had before. And it's really unusual, and so we're, if we're looking for somebody to be Antichrist that could have the power to wish that the, all the nations will, could, would think they can't stand up against and has the power to protect Israel, then we're looking right here. We don't have to look very far. We think, oh, we're a God-fearing country, and, and we're the best there is, or God, or it, United States is not going to be part of the end times or something, they're just somehow going to disappear, well, you're going to find out differently. For we're living in these days that Antichrist must be revealed. So people get ready. Uh, we hear more and more how the days ahead are getting where how can we even withstand what's happened. It seems like destruction, if not total destruction, is, is a common prediction, and yet we're still here, and Trump hasn't been impeached yet, but we're in the brink of a war on bo both sides of the world, and could we be just at that brink? We're seeing the final stages that's going to change our life forever throw a few natural catastrophes in and and we're going to be on our way and the two witnesses will reveal themselves as well. We'll see somebody signing a peace deal, deal and as a Christian you should know that person will be Antichrist. When he actually reveals himself to the world is when he stands in the temple of God that isn't built yet but is ready to be built and declares himself God. If you don't know Jesus right now turn to him and say Jesus, I believe that you're the Son of God and that God sent you to die on the cross by shedding your blood for, to forgive the sins of the world. Forgive me of my sins and come to my life. A simple prayer gets you saved. Now read the King James Bible to get to know Jesus. I say King James Bible because all modern translations are come from the corrupt manuscripts that Westcott and Hort used in the 1880s, where all modern translation comes from with 50,000 to 80,000 corruptions. Now, pay attention to Acts chapter 2, because it talks about baptism in the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. You can be baptized in the Holy Spirit, and you'll speak a language you never learned or understood, and it makes intercessory prayer the Holy Spirit can pray through you and make a difference in the world and help you endure to the end and give you gifts in the Spirit. And one of these gifts is healing, which hasn't passed away. And so you can be healed right this minute now. Do you got a place of pain? You put put it on your put your hand on the place that hurts. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Now go to my website. Press the GoFundMe button or the Donate button. Give a little, give a lot. I always need your help. Thanks a lot. Tune in the same time you're watching now next week. See you then. God bless you.